So she's like, can you make it bigger? And I'm like, yeah, let me do that. And then she was like, just bill me. She didn't even ask. She's mm. like, and I was like, you don't want to know how much it's going to be. I mean, in my mind, I'm like, you don't want to know how much it's going to be. So I just made it where it looked good. And she was like, okay. She's like, yeah, just bill me. Just make it bigger, whatever you think is going to look best and bill me. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel with my inspiring designs with me, Justine, where all I want to do is inspire the event designer in you. I want you guys to meet one of my designers who was part of my coaching program and her name is Amber. Her journey started with me back in October of 2020 when I had shifted and pivoted my business and she was one of the first designers to not only start with my program but have some of the most outrageous success being in the program. Just to give you some backstory of who she is, so Amber is a balloon stylist located in Texas in the United States. She has come such a long way and you get to hear where she was before working with me versus where she was. Now this interview what took place around February of 2021 and all of this huge success that she has has been within one year of her business just know her success is everything and i wanted to share it with the world i'm no longer going to tell you any more information about her her testimony her journey is unreal and it's unlike any other designer that's been in my program she has such fast track to her results because of the efforts that she put into her own business and i know you will be truly inspired by her journey and testimony i will be launching a price your design workshop i can help you build a profitable business on how to price your designs to make more money and actually convert your content on social media into sales so if you're interested there will be a link down below if you're watching this after the due date or after the cart is closed, feel free to click the link down below. There will be more announcements in the near future and if you're on that wait list, you'll be the first one to know before anyone else. So without further ado, let's meet Amber. Hey. Oh, you look so pretty. <laughs> Thanks. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You're so cute. I love the makeup, the background. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that this year I want to share everyone's story and okay. not maybe like everyone's but like the ones who are really killing the game and in four months your transformation has literally went from I mean I think you did better than me in four months no no let me let me rephrase that you did do better than me <laughs> okay. and um <laughs> And it's amazing to watch you <laughs> literally produce what you're doing. And I'm so excited to share your story. And hopefully it inspires other people because you are the pivotal of what's possible. And I feel like it will be encouraging for others to hear how you started because you were in their same shoes. I know right. everybody hears about me, but like seeing someone else go through it and hearing their story. So we're going to start off our conversation with where you were before we even met um okay. when it came to like your business how it got started just kind of walk us through that story okay so um I started my business in May of 2020 and that was before we met um, I kind of so I am an overthinker I don't really consider myself to be very like an organized person but I will say I am an overthinker like I need things to be laid out I need a, a map before I'll start anything I was working for a fashion designer here in Dallas for a couple of years and then I just realized also that that wasn't what I wanted to do. I loved being creative. I love the hands-on part um, mm -hmm. of like making patterns, sewing, the drawing. Like I just loved that part of it. I just didn't like the industry, but I wasn't happy and I, it wasn't fulfilling me, you know, and my dad owns his own business. So I feel like I've just, the entrepreneur was just there as I was growing up. And I always knew that I wanted to work for myself, have my own, my own business. I just didn't know what literally it was like a dumb moment, like, duh, 
<laughs> I've been doing this forever. I've been creative forever. So like birthday parties, I go all out for people. I decorate. I had my son. So I would go all out for his birthdays. He was about to turn two years old. And so I had already like had everything I needed for his party. Just going back when I got married, I planned my entire wedding. I had a event, a wedding coordinator, but just a day of coordinator. Like everything was me. I designed mm. my wedding. I picked my location. I from every detail. And then my baby shower, the same thing. I designed my baby shower. I knew what my centerpieces were going to look like. I designed the structures for my backdrops for the photo booth. And then I just fell in love with balloons and uh, creating things. And then I realized I don't want to do parties, like full parties, like centerpieces on all that. I just want to focus on, and then that's where it comes. You pick your niche. So yeah. that was my niche. And then going back to saying like I overthink things, I think it came in a good time because it, everything was on lockdown. So mm. I literally had the time to research prices, to do like make my prices, like figure out how much I'm gonna charge, how much does material cost? Like I was literally, I had the time to sit down and just plan out, like give me a little roadmap. I had been following you for a long time on YouTube. So I've been a long time subscriber. And then um, that's so funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, I've been decorating for years. Mm -hmm. So I have been subscribed to you for years to learn how to do balloons for oh. before I even started my business. And so then I started, I was following you on Instagram. And then I saw when you were uh, asking if anybody wanted to do like a free uh, call. Right. And so I messaged you and then that's just how we connected and how we got started with that. So, wow. The journey, the journey <laughs> for us meeting. It's so interesting because a lot of so designers that are in your space actually go through the similar things where I noticed that you said you were like, I didn't know what to do. I, they always, everybody always wants to start with the entire events and I'm guilty of that too. When I first started. So it's similar to you where it's just like, well, we have to stop and kind of pause and think like, mm -hmm. what do we really want to do? And a lot of people don't realize how much effort goes into planning events and mm -hmm. really taking place. Like you, when you're doing an entire event, you probably need help, you right. know, you, and you, people will feel like, oh, I have to ask my family and friends. Like I, you can do that, but they're not dependable, especially if they're right. not your employees. Right. I'm so glad that you jumped on it. First of all, you took the leap of faith and was like, me, yeah, <laughs> me, let's call. <laughs> and um, I didn't even think you were going to reach back out to me. I thought, you know, I just, it was like a long shot. Like, let me just shoot my shot and see if it, you know, that's so, so that's, funny. Yeah. You know what's so funny too? I literally went through the same thing when I was announcing it on my Instagram. I was like, let me just shoot my shot. I don't know if mm -hmm. anybody's going to actually want to jump on a call. I was terrified. Stranger danger is real. I've always been like that. So when you and like four other um, designers jumped on it, I was like, wow, like there yeah. are people who genuinely want my help. So let me see what I can help them with. I want to ask you, where were you maybe even up to our first call when it came to pricing your designs, when it came to your confidence in your business and why did you feel you needed help? Okay, so pricing my designs, I had uh, done my research and saw what people in my area were charging. So I'm in the Dallas area, and there's a lot of like well known balloon people in the Dallas area. And so I was just, you know, I would go on their website, I would look, um, I, you know, just doing my research, mm -hmm. looking at other people that weren't in my area. Um, and then so I saw what they were charging and I'm like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not as established as them. I'm very new to this. So I took that as like the goal, but I set my bar super low. I'm like, mm -hmm. let me just charge. And then I figured, let me charge by foot. So that's okay. what everybody in my area was doing. So I decided that's what I would do too. It was just easier for the math in my head, I guess you can say. So I was charging $12 per foot but I wasn't making any money mm. at all. And then for some dumb reason, I was also charging per balloon. So like, oh, it's only costing like, let's just say for an example, 10 cents per balloon. Not taken into consideration, it doesn't matter what I'm charging per balloon, I'm gonna need to buy a full bag of those. <laughs> and if I'm only saying that I'm gonna use like 
a, from a bag of a hundred, I'm going to use like 60. I'm only charging them for 60 balloons and I still come out losing because I need to buy a full bag. So right. it was just like things that I didn't know what I was doing. And <laughs> I was just, I was dumb. Charging no, dumb stuff. No, listen, you're not <laughs> dumb. I think you were really smart by getting research. It's just that you were like, that's where the confidence is. So like to describe, why would you lower your prices knowing what's going on in your neighborhood or in your community, in your city? Um, well, because I would see these big known, well-known balloon companies and they were doing over the top, massive installs that were looked professional are professional and like just amazing design amazing style and I just knew my work wasn't there yet like I knew the ability and I knew with more practice with more time like I would improve but I just knew I wasn't there yet and obviously my work shows from my first garlands but (laughs) um yeah and it actually took off really, really fast because when I started, it was around Mother's Day. So that was like my first like promo type thing was mm-hmm. Mother's Day mini garlands. And I had a lot of orders, like a lot of orders came in. But because the way I was charging people, what, the way my prices were and the cost of materials, I didn't make anything like mm. I and it's so like sad to see like looking back like I had a lot of orders like I it just took off right away um especially I think people like that uh, no contact delivery and all Mm -hmm. that stuff but I didn't make anything nothing at all so when Amber first started just for anyone who was listening is that it was in the middle of a pandemic and people had to shift and pivot their business, including me. It's when I decided that I wanted to teach and help other people. It's where I live. It's my passion. It's in my heart. I love to create, but I love teaching and inspiring more. So when I I couldn't coach anyone on how to build a business in a pandemic, but I could coach someone how to start a business, build a profits, and really scale up to the point where you are living and having money in your pocket. Because that, I think that's mm-hmm. what you said. The challenge was that you were getting clients, but you weren't profiting the way you were mm-hmm. supposed to. Mm-hmm. And, and that's awesome because... I think my rule of thumb, one of my coaches said too, she was just like, you know, when you, after a certain amount of clients, you should be raising your prices because Uh if you're having no hesitation, and I talk about this in my coaching program, then you really want to start building that resistance with your clients because they need to feel a little uncomfortable. And that kind of validates where the value is of your um, garlands or your designs in general should be. Because when you first started, I already knew right away I was just like, you need to charge more. Like automatically, yeah. I saw your page and I was just like, Amber, Amber, let's just let y'all know. She already had her pricing. Like what she said, she had her pricing already. <laughs> she was a very well ahead um, from most of the designers I was working with who were kind of starting from scratch. So her mm-hmm. results were skyrocketing faster because of that. But what was something, what was like some key takeaways when it came to charging your worth? And then we'll talk about that first like big win when it came down to um, you shifting. Well, I think, like I mentioned, I've always had that type of like entrepreneur spirit in me. I don't know if you remember, but after the very first call, so when you posted it on your Instagram, who wants to jump on a free call after our very first call, like it wasn't no coaching. You were just trying to get to know me, what I needed. And you told me and uh, to that my prices need to be higher. And literally that night I raised my price. Oh, that's right. That's right? right. You remember. <laughs> so yes. I think it's just having that like entrepreneur spirit. And I guess knowing your worth. I mm. knew my worth. It just took somebody to tell me, I guess, that it was okay. Like you gave me that permission. And so I did it. Like, right. I, you know, it's a business. That's all, you know, you have to separate your feelings from a business and Mm. I didn't even bump them up that high I just (laughs) right I was charging $12 a foot I bumped it up to $15 right right it's okay we it was a work in progress (laughs) yeah so um you know I think it was just you telling me that it's okay like Mm. I knew my worth I know my worth Um, sometimes you doubt yourself sometimes you get in a little funk but 
And I don't know if you also remember, but I was very confident when we first started on our right. calls. And I think I was, the confidence came because I already had clients. Like I knew right. this was something that people liked. This was something that um, I was finally doing what I was meant to do. And I mm-hmm. also think that whole like praying about it and then getting that confirmation from it. I just knew, okay, this is my business. This is what, you know, God told me to do. This is what God gave me. He gave right. this business to me. So I love that. I love that. And that's real honest. And that confidence like eluded into our sessions together because you, I think when someone has confidence already and they really just need the extra push, the results are a skyrocket. Like it's just a matter of time. And that's what I kept saying to myself. Even I was telling my husband, I was like, this Amber's about to kill it. I'm telling y'all right now. <laughs> I say my your paths are always meant to like they're like stepping stones on where you want to be. You came to me with confidence, right? So why what were you looking for our sessions? What was your mm-hmm. overall goal? Um, I knew that I don't really really remember what I was looking for. I just knew that I didn't know the business side, and you mm. do. I knew that I needed somebody to guide me that knew what they were talking about and what they were doing. I just knew how to be creative and, Mm -hmm. you know, but you need somebody that's ahead of you. That's that has walked in your shoes that knows what they're talking about. And that's just, I feel like that's just something that everyone needs. Everyone needs a mentor. Everyone needs somebody. And so I knew if I was going to be successful, if I, you know, knew where I wanted my business to be, I couldn't do it alone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and That's you powerful. were just perf- were the perfect one, you know, like just our coming together and everything. It's just, you know, it was meant to be. I, that's how I feel. It was meant to be. I and- agree. I agree. I agree a hundred percent because the reason why I had fast results in my business as well as, I mean, you've surpassed me now and we'll talk about that because she got some stories to share, but the biggest way to fast track your results is to get with someone who's ahead of where you want to be. I want everybody to understand too, is that in you, Amber too, you will shift your focus with certain mentors as your business evolves because you're evolving as an entrepreneur, your business is evolving. And so you're going to need to like, I, I still love my mentors because they showed me what it was when it comes to designing. But now I knew I wanted to help someone else business-wise. So I had to get with someone who's doing it just like how I want to do it. Let's talk about like the clients in your eyes as you transcended through the program. Before that night that I raised my prices, I was kind of going through a little slump. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't getting any uh, bookings because so I started I think I started at a good time so my first like big promotion thing was like Mother's Day and then graduation was that was you know right after so I was having a lot of Mother's Day and graduation bookings but then once that kind of like slowed down I wasn't getting anything else and again I'll go back to like God telling me like this is what it's you know this is for you because after our call Mm -hmm. you gave me the confidence to raise my prices so I did Literally that night after I finished, like I had just put my like a uh, computer down. I got a DM for someone <laughs> wanting course. to book me. Yeah, of <laughs> right. Of course. It's and only, it, of- it, it really is though. You're, you're like, you're the typical. And a lot of people don't know that is that I think something happens when your mind shifts. Um, it produces in the world and it comes into fruition so I'm sorry to cut you off but I just wanted to say that so uh, it was a referral from somebody that I did a Mother's Day thing I guess it was so um, it was for a proposal Mm -hmm. it was actually the guy contacting me he wanted a setup for he was going to propose to his girlfriend and he wanted me to do this setup he sent me a picture and so we did it And he, and I was scared because even though I was like, okay, I'm gonna change my prices. Justine told me I needed to, um, I knew I needed to, but you know, you still have that little doubt, like, right. But it's still there. Yeah. It's now I'm like, but it's more expensive. Like, Mm. are they going to pay? Um, you know, just those types of thoughts, like, but I can get a lot of customers if my prices are low, you know, just things like that. So he contacted me and he had no problem with the price. He paid mm. right then and there. 
And I was like, okay. Like, it was so surprising <laughs> to me. And um, I was like, okay. So he booked. We, you know, I did that. And then um, along, along, I don't know if you were going to get into it, but um, along the lines of then later, the fiance, she contacts me. And so this was my first repeat customer. So she contacts me and I never met her. I only met him because he DM'd me. And then I met him the day of the proposal. But obviously, of course, she wasn't there. So she messages me and she's like, hey, you know, we're getting married. Uh, our wedding's coming up. I want you to uh, do the balloons for our wedding. And by that point, I had already raised my prices even more. And they had no problem with that either. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, these are the people that I need. These are right. the people that have no problem with the price. I mean, I don't know, you know how guys, they don't really want to share like how much they spent, but if she went back and told him, okay, she's going to do the wedding. This is the price. He knows what the price from before was. And then this price, like there was no pushback. There was no, um, they saw the value in my work. And those mm -hmm. are the type of people I'm like, that's the type of people I need. I need people that are going to value what I do and see the value. And just to kind of reiterate that this all happened within probably a month. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say it's like a month um, of you, where you started. And then so like maybe four, maybe five weeks into working with you and pushing you even further. I would love for you to share what you charge <laughs> the husband versus what okay. you charge the wife. And it's, we don't have to mention any names, but no, no, no. it's such a big jump. So please do. Cause I think the okay. people need to hear. <laughs> so I was charging $85 and then for the wedding, it was a $400 install. Can we get a <laughs> mic drop? I can't drop my <laughs> mic, but <laughs> I could not believe that you were able to not only book someone because I think your starting rate was at 300 right we had agreed like you need to start yes, yes yeah right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then she not only booked <laughs> she went from 85 dollars with one client but within the same same family she booked like something that's like triple or quadruple the price like how what, what what's what's going through your mind because I was so shocked I was beyond shocked like what did what did what was going on through your mind when she said okay like with no hesitation I don't really I don't remember <laughs> and see I was telling my husband I need to start journaling like after every install mm -hmm. like I know what I've started doing was you you told us to journal like our wins and things like that but I also need to start journaling like my installs because mm. I don't remember like it's so like I mean not to like I'm not trying to like be braggy or anything but I've had a lot of like jobs since then and I don't remember listen we just got started guys <laughs> <laughs> you might want to pause this video get something to drink and eat because you got a lot more stories <laughs> you booked a $400 install and yes I do recommend journaling I mean the way it will help you remember I always journal wins I always journal challenges and then I just journal just because mm -hmm. and I try to be disciplined to do it every day now do I do it every day no but that way at the end of the year I can kind of reflect and see oh this yeah. did happen I completely forgot that we end our sessions like I think around November me and mm -hmm. you both kind of go our separate ways in December I kind of fall out of the face of the earth and YouTube social <laughs> <Yes>. media <laughs> <laughs> yes I was just I think the 2020 effect was real for me so I do apologize for going ghost but January came back with a bang <laughs> so I want to describe like the challenges because there were some challenges when you and I both went our separate ways before you mm -hmm. joined back in our group coaching mm -hmm. I know you always tell well, I, I mean, I'm sure you tell all the designers you coach, but not to do like discounts or sales or things like that. You also told me to stay away from the mini garlands, but I was already getting like into a slump. Like that confidence that I had when we first started mm -hmm. was like withering away. So I still was getting uh, bookings and clients, but they were just like going down like when we first started and you had us fill out like a form and it was like limiting beliefs and things like that one of them was that I put there's so much competition in mm -hmm. Dallas and my like rebuttal for that was well there's room for all of us that was my mindset like there's room for everyone right um but then I was actually like seeing 
those competitions and realizing like I'm a and I think it's because also I was so new to it that I was like separating myself from the actual competition. Like, mm. I, I think that's where my mindset was. And then when I started seeing myself, like I'm in this circle, like the balloon people in Dallas, I'm one of them. Mm. And so I started really realizing like, they really are my competition. Mm. And so it kind of like started going down like, they're better like they're getting more bookings um you, you know just once they actually once you realize that they're now your competition and I'm their competition um and not in a bad way like oh we're competing against each other but we're just in the same market like mm-hmm. I'm now in the same market as them that was I think messing with my head even though you told me not to you're like don't do the mini garlands in my mind, I'm like, that was so good for me in the beginning. Like right. my mini garlands were selling. I had, and so I kind of went up against your wishes and I tried <laughs> to do, <laughs> and I tried to do a little mini garland thing for Halloween. Well, that mm. bombed and I lost money and oh, I lost no. money because I bought all the supplies for that. Oh, and nobody, this. nobody placed an order. Nobody booked any mini garlands for Halloween. And I had, I had two designs and I had enough to make five of each design. So 10 garlands in total. And I'm like, if you know, that's going to be a, that's going to be good money if all 10. So So, I want to, I want to stop you right there because mm -hmm. I hear this all the time (laughs) and not to pick on your story, but to kind of generalize what the mindset is, is that when we feel comfortable right when we don't like to feel discomfort we go back to our old ways I mean I think that's just in humans in general but the one thing I will say is that when you know what sells right when you have built the opportunity and ability to sell something that's high profit to go back to your old ways it just makes no sense it's like right. asking a child who's a teenager to go back to being a baby you are a type of person that has to try it out you are a person that has to learn yeah. from experience which is most people and a true teacher which is what i am i know experience is the best form of teaching so mm-hmm. And that's just good parenting. That's just, you know, you could take it above and beyond. When you want someone to really learn, you have to allow them to go through whatever they have to go mm-hmm. through. And although my tuition, intuition was saying, mm, it's, it's not where you're supposed to be. It's not your destiny. You're not supposed to go back. But right. what's crazy is that this makes sense now why you had such a crazy month um, in January because we've been talking a lot about hitting our upper limits and those doubts, worries, and fears play a role into when we hit our glass ceiling, we're going back down into our comfort zone. It's that our zone of excellence. So you've already figured out how to attract clients. So technically you didn't really push through to your zone of genius where you're selling garlands at a higher ticket offer. Instead, you went back to what you weren't good at, what you know works and where you feel comfortable. And Mm -hmm. it's the most dangerous zone that we can live in as not only as creative people, but entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Because when you transcend, which you did in January, (laughs) um, magic happens. And Mm -hmm. literally your life is living proof of what it feels like to stay in your zone of genius. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a book called The Big Leap by Gay Mm -hmm. Hendricks. I've been like, I should be sponsored by them because- (laughs) I've been telling everybody, yeah. (laughs) I've been telling everybody, but read this book because it's so enlightening to know when stuff like that happens, to know that it's not you. It's it is you, but -hmm. you can push past it. And let's fast forward because you definitely did. So let's talk Mm -hmm. about January. So we got on a call, and I'm just gonna give some backstory. Is that every I was asking every everybody how everybody was doing after the new year. And to see where everybody's headspace at. And the most common thing was like, I'm not getting any bookings. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so in my mind, I start freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, my strategies don't even work long term. Like, what the heck? Yeah. So I was like, okay, there has to be something more what's going on. But I think after that first group coaching call, you were telling me you weren't confident. You were telling me everything mm-hmm. you're saying now. And then <laughs> something mm-hmm. happened two weeks later where we jumped back on or even before then. And walk me through that. Walk me through your journey the whole entire month. What happened? So we had talked and we had set a goal. And you told me that I would be at this much money. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, I had told you how much I wanted to make in a month. Right. And you told me, I can see you by the time you hit a year being at this. 
Mm-hmm. So I was very like, I'm not going to reach that goal. I didn't get no bookings. I had one booking in December and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I was just not confident. My confidence was at the lowest, I guess you, you can say. Um, but then once 2021 hit and you, after our first call, you told us to write down our goals, put more content out, get creative with my content, um, you know, just show my work, show, you know, what, I, what I can do that I am as good as, you know, these other people that I belong in the same, in the same court that I'm on the same level, you know, just, just, you know, just things like I just had personal goals to, to me and not even number wise. So, Mm -hmm. um, but I think when you take your focus off the money and off the number and just focus on the basics, like just get down and to the basics. And I think that's when things happen. Like Mm -hmm. not so much that when you focus on a a number, you're being greedy. Cause I don't feel that that's the case. I don't feel like the number that we set, like your goal for me and what I told you, what I wanted. I I, I don't see it being out of greed. I mean, if you're going to run a business, you need to make money. You need to be profitable. That's exactly what a lot of people. So a lot of designers, I think it's just the creative portion. Like Mm -hmm. we would do this for free, but that's a hobby that if you're doing it for free if you're doing this kind of it's not a business a business is about money and at the end of the day if you're not generating sales if you're not generating money you're not making money and I always tell people you know how would you feel if you saw your client going to a car dealership putting down a two thousand dollar payment but they're giving you a hard time off of 150 dollar deposit or something like that Mm -hmm. like you would be like wait a minute you were just giving me a hard time but you can't afford it so in essence, people pay for things that they see value in. Mm-hmm. And when you're showcasing what you can do, what mm-hmm. you can, what's possible when it comes to working with you, which is exactly why social media is so important or a digital portfolio, that's what I call it. Mm-hmm. It puts into perspective of like, oh, when I hit up Amber at Vash Event Design, I know it's going to be a, a, a good amount of money because right. look at her work everyone gets a job to get money. So why is starting a business any different? You know, I think when we have our perception about what wealth means, um, a lot of people don't know what wealthy people do with their money. You don't know, you don't know what they're donating their money towards. You don't know how they're helping other people, you know, like no one knows your moves and no one needs to know as long as it's in your heart and you're doing it for the right reasons and you're gaining money because you deserve it by all means, you know, charge Mm -hmm. what you should, and and to be honest, I told you this, even after all the wins that you had in January, which we will cover in a second, you should be charging more because mm-hmm. I know I see the value because everyone lives here in their, oh, this is where I feel comfortable. This is where I got someone to book. If you book it a few times, bump it up, always mm-hmm. bump it up because now you'll go into the high ticket sales and you are going to be the go-to. Mm-hmm. You're going to be the, you know, booking celebrities and they're not going to pay a hundred. So if I'm a celebrity, I'm not going to sit here and pay $150. There's something wrong yeah. with you. Right. I, I, you, you I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like even suspect about that. That's suspicious. So you had a lot of wins in January and even some things that are even not monetary and have really helped your business get in front of more people. So kind of mm-hmm. walk us through that. What's what happened <clears throat> in January with your, I think business. it's been an eventful January <laughs> and now February. <laughs> right. Like you are killing it. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for you to share. <laughs> okay. So, um, before the year actually ended, I actually became and started connecting with a well-known event designer here in my area. She reached out and wanted to like, she wanted to start like this organization type thing here in our city. And so she reached out wanting to see, you know, people that wanted to be on the team. I reached out to her. So I'm part of like a team, uh, you know, for this thing that she does here. And so from there, we became friends. We uh, became close. Now she uh, she goes to me for like, uh, she'll send me people like if she's overbooked or if she all of a sudden needs to go out of town for something and she has installs, she'll give it, you know, give it to me. She, we were messaging and she's like, Hey, you're my go-to person. You know, like basically if she's overbooked or something comes up, she's going to send her clients my way. Other designer that's here in my, in my area. She, like I said, she's been sending me people, which I'm very thankful for. And some of these people are 
people that have never booked with her. So technically they could now be my clients. And then she sent me her clients. And one thing is I'm never going to steal her clients, but I'm going to treat her clients the same way I would treat mine, you Mm -hmm. know, and I would never want her clients to go back and tell her like, she didn't put nothing, like she didn't put her heart into it. Right. Or, you know, just things like I always wanted to come back with a good word. Like she took care of us. What about having your dream client when you went to the apartment complex where the rent was like so expensive? Like you knew right then and there, that's your dream client. I had one install and it was at a really fancy restaurant here in Dallas. And it was like an upscale restaurant, but I didn't know, like, I don't eat at those restaurants, but my client does, my customers do. I didn't know. I just didn't know the etiquette of those types of restaurants. And I just walked through the front door. We're like, hey, we're here to set up. And like the hostess and everybody knew, like they were expecting us. But I just went through the front door. And I'm like, we're here to set up for this for this uh, event or the dinner, a dinner that these people are having. And so while, and when I'm like, my husband always goes on installs with me. And when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. I don't hear anything that's going on around me. And so then afterwards, my husband was like, Hey, did you hear that lady at another table? I'm like, no, I didn't hear anything. And that the people, the customers were upset. They were like, what is she doing? Walking through the front door. You need to use the service entrance and all this stuff. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know there was a service entrance. I don't go to these restaurants. <laughs> I didn't know I couldn't walk through the front door with my balloon columns. <laughs> oh my. I didn't know this happened. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so that always stuck in my mind. And so right. I, so one of the points was, you know, once I found out it was in her building, I'm like, do I need to, can I walk through the front door? Is there a service entrance I need to go mm. through? You know, just things like that. It was for a baby shower. So I was like, okay, is this for you? Is it for someone else? She was throwing the, she was hosting the baby shower. Mm. I'm like, tell me about the mom to be. So I found out, you know, she's a first time mom. She's not girly. So, Mm. but she's having a girl, but she's not girly. So these are the colors we want. And then after the end, she, she booked right then and there, you know, on the call, she booked, I sent her the invoice to pay. So then come the day of the install, this building, I'm like, these are my customers. These, I found them. I found them. Right. I was, uh, there was a concierge, um, you know, the concierge was like, you park if you need valet, which valet, it would have been just better. I was like, no, we don't need valet. Let me just park. And she was like, okay, park here. She told me where to park the concierge. Um, While we were getting things out of the truck, there was Maseratis, G-Wagons, Teslas, Mm. Bentleys, like all these cars. And so I'm like, wow, these are my people. So anyways, we go and we do the (laughs) install and it was at that point, like I was, we were trying to figure out where they wanted it hung. And normally like people don't even, they don't want to exceed their budget, I guess you can say. So we're there and I'm putting it on the wall. And so this is a big fancy, like, um, condos or building or whatever. I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> it just costs and a lot so, of money. <laughs> and so where they, it was in like the amenity center the the ceilings were super tall it was like this it was really a nice building and the ceilings were tall so the size she wanted wasn't a mini garland or wasn't little or anything but it just looked little on the wall Mm -hmm. so we're hanging it and she's like can you make it bigger and I'm like yeah and normally I'm used to people saying well how much will that be um you know like whatever or not even asking to make it bigger because they know it's going to be more money so she's like can you make it bigger? And I'm like, yeah, let me do that. And then she was like, just bill me. She didn't even ask. She's mm. like, and I was like, you don't want to know how much it's going to be. I mean, in my mind, I'm like, you don't want to know how much it's going to be. And she was like, no, uh, she was like, yeah, just, you know, make it bigger, whatever you think is going to look good. So like, literally I could have made it however long I wanted and build her for that. But you know, I'm not going to do that. So I just made it where it looked good. And she was like, okay. She's like, yeah, just bill me. Just make it bigger, whatever you think is going to look best and bill me. Wow. And I'm like, okay, I, you know, this is the people that I, my target. Someone who just says, bill me, I don't care how much it is. Like that is when, you know, and it's so funny. Cause I used to say idea, idea. Oh yeah. Ideal client, your idea client. You said on the call, you were like, it's a dream client. It's a dream client. And I was like, 
it is a dream client. <laughs> I'm going to use that terminology. Like you've inspired mm-hmm. that portion. Why would they book you out of anybody else? You know, mm-hmm. and to have that confidence to know, like every experience, like you said, every install that you've done has taught you to be a better mm-hmm. entrepreneur, better, better balloon stylist. Amber's TikTok has mm-hmm. reached over 10,000 followers overnight. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and really, and then over 500. I don't know where you are now. Um, I know see. the screenshot was like over 500 views for one of her videos that went viral. She's like, how do I figure this out? I was like, girl, when and it you was figured nothing. out, let me know. <laughs> it was nothing. Literally, and, I didn't talk. Right. <laughs> it was, it was the same videos because the other videos weren't moving. So Oprah has a saying and it says, there's no such thing as luck in life. There's opportunity Mm -hmm. meets hard work. Like, so your Mm -hmm. hard work meets your opportunity and that's your luck. Mm -hmm. So everything about that quote, like you symbolize exactly what that means. To see you go from charging $85, do you mind sharing what that last install, how much you charged? I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but coming up, I have a $900 install. Okay, so it's that's what that's the one I was looking for. Like, mm-hmm. so you have a yeah. nine hundred to go from eighty five dollars to nine hundred dollars is unreal, you know. And to go from no followers and to attracting people who want to fly you out because she didn't mention <laughs> that either, who are willing to fly her out to because she's now Amber, you're turning into the go to person. You know, you're living in your competitor's world and you're making mm-hmm. a mark. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're not trying to compete. You're just trying to have a seat at the table. That's what Mm -hmm, I always mm -hmm. say. Know that your competition is not to compete with. There's always room for more. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you have a seat at the table, you're you're entering the 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 dining room. Like you're there. It's the matter of now. Like it's just up from here. And I am so excited to be a part of your journey and to really watch your not your entrepreneurial life unfolds watch you grow as an entrepreneur the confidence is skyrocketing like this is what a uh, successful entrepreneur looks like they you know you know your worth will you mm-hmm. ever do m- mini balloon garlands by themselves will you no Mm-mm. and it's not fun it's not fun to me anymore you know mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Because you like to be challenged. That's the creative yes. portion yeah. of you. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and then I think you said you're gonna have one of your installs is gonna be a ceiling balloon mm-hmm. garland too. It's that so the nine hundred dollar one. The, there you go. Yeah. And I told her like these are huge wins because everything that led up to this point and you still haven't hit a year. That's what's even crazier to me. It's like you still haven't hit a year in your business mm-hmm. and you have so much room more for growth that it's just up from here. And I am so proud. If no one else tells you, you are doing such an amazing job. And I would love to hear like your last minute advice for people who probably were in your shoes or in Mm -hmm. your shoes where they don't know how to like figure things out. And, you know, what would you tell them to kind of close our get together here? First, I would just say like, get you a coach, get you a mentor, because honestly, I wouldn't have this much success this quickly Mm. if it wasn't for Justine like you have to know your possibilities and I know I could eventually get here um but not this quick I think you know it's just for one I would always tell Justine I just love being able to just bounce ideas off of you you know um when we would do our coaching calls because like it was our one-on-one coaching calls like it was just so good and like I I was just like I love the ability to uh, bounce ideas off of you and then you telling me yeah like yes no or whatever whatever your ideas were so I'd say get you somebody and it has to be somebody that's not in the same position as you because they're going through the same thing you're going through you know um so yeah just get you somebody that has your best interest in mind and you know a little plug you know Justine I know she does um (laughs) thank you yeah, I no. didn't pay her to say that, guys. I'm telling you that right now. This is all on her own. I didn't even yeah. tell her what questions I was going to ask. Her. I don't even know. I was just going with the flow. Right. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate it. And then I would say just know your worth. Like you always hear people say that. And to me, it was kind of, it was one of those things like, I don't, I get it, but I don't get it. Like, mm-hmm. will people see my worth? And I think on one of your Facebook posts, you asked, I don't even remember what the question was, but something that, and my response was, it's scary to charge your worth. 
And do people see your worth? Mm. And that was something too, like you have to know your worth and those people that see your worth, you will find them, you know? And also it just takes a lot of hard work. Like, I don't want people to sit here and look and I mean, cause I don't want them, you to think like you're going to be able to be like me or uh, surpass me by not doing work, you know? I think that's or, what it is, is that you were already working hard prior to us working together. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot easier to coach you. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it was any less than that, because that's the, re- I knew who my ideal client was. Mm-hmm. And this is why I have calls that I go through because I have to make sure I'm choosing okay. the right person that I can definitely help with your transformation definitely help get those results and I'm picky and just like how you are with your clients which is Mm -hmm. wow I've learned it so I'm going to teach it um you want to be picky when it comes Mm -hmm. to because the higher Amber grows into her business the more picky she has to become when it comes like just because they have a lot of money doesn't mean she probably wants to work like those people who are getting all upset at the restaurant you probably don't want to work with them, even mm-hmm. though they do have money, you know? So mm-hmm. you have to know your ideal client. Everybody in our program is, they're hungry. They're mm-hmm. hungry for that success. They're willing to put in the work. They're not making excuses and they don't even wait for me to coach them. They do it and then they get results. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can sit here and, and own that. And then like, no, 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 it's because of you because you helped me. Like I always get on these calls and like, I always tell people, I'm letting you know right now, there will be magic. I don't know why, I don't know how, (laughs) but something always happens But right before our first call. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It's just, it is what it is. That's exactly what happened. I went viral on TikTok, but I posted (laughs) it on my Instagram. And so people that know me or are like congratulating me and not that they think that it came easy to me, but I just want people to know that it wasn't easy. So people like are congratulating Mm -hmm. me and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I've been putting a lot of work into my TikToks. Right. You know, right. And some people are like, it's just TikTok. Well, I mean, it gets you exposure, you know, like, And so it's just everything. Like, I feel like I am not only like being creative in my designs, but also I love being creative in my social media and, you know, just Mm. figuring out what works for my clients. So it's just, you know, do a lot of like research, do the work, do the work and put it in and it's going to pay off. It's eventually, it's like building the momentum. And that's what I always Mm -hmm. tell you. It's like, eventually you'll push the boulder up the hill and you're going to be the one pushing. And what I love about your story is that you're, the boulder's moving itself Mm -hmm. and it's showing in every aspects of your business and hopefully it's showing in every aspects of your life because of the potential you are, and you're just living in it and you're Mm -hmm. continuing to stay humble in your own success and wins. But knowing that it doesn't mean you just stop the work continues, you know, there's still going to be more challenges, like possibly bringing someone on, which, you know, Mm -hmm. I definitely will be talking about that in our program moving forward of like how Mm -hmm. to hire someone, your first Mm -hmm. person, because you want to make sure you're doing that because in order to generate more money, you have to have people that kind of go with you along that. So I really do appreciate it. This interview or I don't even know what to call it, but this was <laughs> amazing. I had an awesome time. There were things I didn't even know happened. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for really inspiring someone else to do it. Mm-hmm. I always tell people, even if they don't book me and their client, you know, as their coach, that my channel still leaves them inspired to maybe find mm-hmm. someone else who's more of a perfect fit. And that's all right. right. Too. Mm-hmm. So I do appreciate you. If you guys want to follow and give some love to Amber, I'll put her links on her, all of her social media down below. So that way you guys can see what she's capable of. I appreciate you. And I really hope you nothing but the best because I know when that year hits, you're going to be meeting beyond what you thought you would. And I'm going to speak it into existence again, just like on our calls. You're, you're so blessed and your hard work is finally paying off and I hope it continues for you. Thank you okay. so much. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good night. I kept you long enough. Um, if anyone, just to kind of give you guys my call to action, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. If you like what you saw, leave a comment. I'll tell Amber to check the videos if you guys have any <laughs> questions. Other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>